Hello and welcome to the Camera Central podcast. My, My name is Tyler Stuart. George. He likes to interrupt me every single time. My name is Tyler George, and today I'm joined by Nathan Wyburn. Hi, guys. The Camera Central podcast is available both on Spotify and YouTube. So make sure you like, follow, and subscribe if you want to see more. Let's get back into it, shall we? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Stuart is also here. <laughs> yes. <That's rude>. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nathan. Tell us about you. Who are you? Why are you here? Oh my gosh, that's a big question, Tyler. Um, so I am a pop culture portrait artist, mm-hmm. I guess, most known for using unconventional, weird, everyday materials within my work. Yes, yes. We've known each other a little while as we well. Have. We have, we have. We've worked yeah. together a few times. We have done, yeah. So uh, by unconventional materials, why don't you tell people what kind of stuff you use? Yeah, so essentially I love the idea of art being accessible to everyone. So anything and everything you can find around the house, the garden, anything Mm -hmm. so I guess I've used a lot of food materials uh, a lot of old like makeup chopping up clothes chopping up newspapers pretty much anything you can get your hands on quite literally anything it's very hard to go up and down the aisle in a supermarket without thinking I could use that (laughs) yeah Yeah. 100% it's like what can I make out of fish yes I've used fish yeah Uh, I'm sure you have yeah Yeah, 100% (laughs) so I I mean that means it's easily accessible to everybody right so kids teenagers you know all ages yeah specific to a certain type of person not at all do you know what something that I I've dislike the most about the art world is that sometimes it can feel so inaccessible yeah. and so scary to people that would love to be part of it but they don't mm. feel like they can yeah it's a lot the idea of going into a big art gallery with like big white walls and all this money and all this different stuff it frustrates me a little bit so i love yeah. the idea of displaying art anywhere creating art anywhere using the cheapest of materials if you'd like yeah so yeah then anyone can do it yeah that's right yeah. yeah and i think as well when we talk about art as a, as a medium it's like well photography for example mm-hmm. is you have to have a sort of understanding of it and you yeah. have to have a sort of you have to learn certain things before you can advance a certain way yeah so it does, do you feel like that's the case with what you do as well i think so experience think makes matter at definitely that point? and you know you can you can teach things to an extent mm-hmm. um i studied obviously all the way through school and up to degree level with my artwork but you can teach like the basics of certain things but in terms of having that eye and having that sort of expertise in your creative field yeah um it's, it's down to you it's yeah. down to your practice your goal your determination yeah that's it so let's talk about um some of the people you've worked with i oh. mean we're gonna we're gonna like right like, so just just bear in mind we're gonna really name drop uh. now okay <laughs> and this isn't this isn't me blowing my trumpet this is generally what nathan does uh, yeah okay so why don't we start with go ahead oh okay um so you know what in in the past year actually there's been some really amazing people that i've got to present some artwork to Mm -hmm. um work for or for their brand their company whatever yeah um so just off the top of my head um there's been blondie debbie harry that was pretty amazing it's kind of cool yeah that's yeah. like you know and, and for me as well as an artist knowing that she was friends with like andy warhol who was one of my biggest idols yeah. um she was part of that big studio 54 that new york vibe um that was just amazing to know that she appreciated my work yeah. i mean that's kind of like a higher compliment as you can get right? honestly like yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's kind of kind of crazy actually yeah. um so i made her a portrait with broken records got to give that to her they weren't her records i told her and she yeah. was like it would have been fine if they were i was like <laughs> No, I would not, you know, yeah. blaspheme like that. I would not smash yeah, up your imagine records. That. Um, Tom Holland as I mean, Spider-Man. Like, well, that's pretty, that's cool. pretty yeah. That's pretty sick. Yeah, so yeah. that was definitely one of the highlights of the year. So yeah. for his portrait, I actually chopped up a Spider-Man costume that I bought off Amazon. I thought that was going to go an entirely different avenue. I mean, yeah, I actually chopped I mean up a there are many things that we could do with Tom Holland, but we won't mention them on the podcast. Oh. Well, <laughs> lovely guy. <laughs> Lovely yeah. guy. So yeah, there's 100%. been some pretty cool ones in the past year. Sting, um, the their royal highnesses, um, Prince. Um, so Prince, sorry, I've gone blank. Um, Prince William and Kate. Yeah. Um, so there's been loads. There's been absolutely loads. Yeah. Yeah. Shirley Bassey. Yes. I mean that's kind love of a big Bassey. Welsh one. Oh yeah. yeah. I love Bassey. Have you met Tom Jones? Yes. So yeah, Tom. Yeah. So I've Tom. got to meet uh, yeah. in the past year just as some, well. Just some Welsh names in there. I know. Welsh camera yeah. shop. So, I know. So talk about your defining moment. What kind of took you from nobody basically yeah. to um <laughs> to your your defining like what's that one thing that maybe it was more than one thing but what's that one moment in life that really took you to the level that you're at now yeah um so i think 
I've got to sort of thank YouTube for everything. Mm -hmm. um, kind of when YouTube was first started in sort of 2008, 2009, um, there weren't really many artists on there sort of filming themselves, sketching, doing what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. It was mostly sort of musicians and pranks and different stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I saw this guy in America that was filming himself, creating his artwork in time lapse. And I thought, right, can I do this? Yeah. So I actually, I think I first used, do you remember the eye toy that was on PlayStation, 4, PlayStation 2? Yeah. Like the, the silly little eye toy camera. So I think I actually used that to film myself and yeah. then sped it up using some god awful system, I can't even remember what. Um, like a six minute video of me sketching celebrities. Yeah. Put it on, nobody would watch a six minute video these days. No. Um, it's, it's, it's more like it has to be 30 seconds, like the the, yeah. the speed of it. I think yeah. I think you'll be surprised, I think long form is coming back. I, uh, yeah. I think so. I think in yeah. a time where people's uh, kind of attention spans are so yeah. low, I think it's important. I think it's I one of those things where it's like, you use photo to emphasize video, or you use video to emphasize photo. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where short form content is very much gonna be how it you get somebody interested in a particular yeah. longer form video with a higher concept overall yeah and i hope so and i think because because there's so much more to sometimes the process of my work that you can't really fit it all into a 30 second no, video it's um crazy. but i just found over the years that people used to quite literally watch six minutes of me making mm -hmm. the artwork and now they'd rather 30 seconds but if I was to um, use other bits within it that sort of film other parts of the process, maybe I could get mm. away with making them a bit longer. I'm not sure, but it's, it's changed a lot over time. I know with TikTok being so fast, but then they're saying, even TikTok's encouraging people to do longer than one, yeah. one minute now. Yeah. So it does seem to be coming well, back. They, they literally Something... just done an update saying you can now do a 10 minute thing, yeah. video wow. on TikTok. Well, um, the other thing is with YouTube as well, is that um, you can actually do, and so you got your shorts, which do yeah. well, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, but you, there's actually a click for through link, right? Um, which you can apply straight to it, um, and it comes down the bottom, and it allows you to go straight through to a longer form content mm -hmm. if it's Amazing. about something in particular. Yeah. I've used it a couple of times on when shorts have done particularly well to yeah. push views onto other videos. But um, yeah. it's all done on your phone. I'm yeah. sure. I, you know, I but, think yeah. what's super crazy is how quickly everything's changing. I know in all that the time. respect. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've been social media manager here for about just about a year now, and it, and have, I've had to relearn how to do adverts four times mm -hmm. yeah. because of the way the structure works and, yeah. and the new things they keep adding to it. So. Um, Let's talk about let's talk about the content creation side of it for you then. So yeah. I imagine because you're not a photographer, no, nope. or a videographer. I studied I mean, photography at A level. Sure, yeah, um, well, that counts. That that's pretty much as far as I went. But because I knew that I would kind of need it for the route I was going down because I was making so much perishable artwork, things that yeah. you know it would go moldy or you'd have to recycle it or bin it. Mm. Um, so I needed that photograph and that video in order to document the process and for it to live on. So it's always been part of my work, no matter what. Yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't necessarily call myself a photographer. Sure, I mean, well, the thing is, there's loads of things you can do with an iPhone these days, yeah. you know, in terms of, of building your own content. But yeah. Uh, I, I know that you, and the reason why you're on the podcast is because you rely on yeah. people like myself and Stuart yeah. to create the content. Yeah. And then you have your success. Yeah. And that's that's how it works. So yeah. um, how influential has it been, or say we say, not the word influential, what's the fucking <laughs> word? How prominent as it been for you yeah and to have to have accessible people around you all the time uh, it's, it's been essential to be honest um and quite often like even before it became sort of a full-time job and i'd get approached by brands and obviously they would then supply video and, and mm. camera guys and whatnot um to do all that for me but quite often i'd call upon my friends yeah. um and people with much better expertise in in this field than myself so um, including you before. Yeah, yeah <laughs> um, we've done a few things. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's 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 needed, like I say, because otherwise there's no way of documenting what I do. Mm. Um, say, for instance, the, I made a huge Tom Jones artwork on the grounds of Cardiff Castle yeah. using soil. So that was essentially just by dropping soil on the green, green grass of home. That was the fun link there. Yeah. Um, but the weather would take that away. The next yeah. day, if it rained or if the wind picked up, that soil would just disperse and disappear into the ground. Um, so I needed somebody to film it. I needed a guy to chuck a drone up in the sky and get that amazing shot. Otherwise, what, what's the point in yeah. making a gigantic image of Tom Jones in Cardiff Castle? Yeah. So I need these people and the people would, 
your skills mm. to in order to keep my work alive yeah it's essential yeah. yeah and i think it, it's so interesting how it's always a collaboration even yeah. if it's your own, your own idea yeah. it's always a collaboration mm -hmm. of like you know i need this person and if that person doesn't turn up then i can't do it and yeah you know there's yeah. a lot of that and reliability with yeah. each other um Stuart, any questions no, not really. <laughs> um, sorry, I was I did, just um, I did really write enjoying it. Yeah. Um, of course, it's actually a really interesting kind of idea that you've put forth into the, what you do, mm -hmm. and that is creating portraits out of um, things that I think other people would consider not youthful mm -hmm. or, you know, broken, you know, broken vinyl, for example. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's absolutely fascinating in that retrospect. And, and if I'm honest, I've often thought about doing an art project on... Um, Box brownies, because we've got right. these things called box brownies. I don't know Have if there's any up there. There's one there. Got the second one. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, box yeah. brownies. Um, but I think it's, it is important for, you know, for people to have, um, like, a camera to be able to document this yeah. journey. And I think with the advent of social media, I think it's becoming more and more popular. I'm guessing your social media in particular has been a big part of how you've managed to work with so many big people. Yeah, yeah, it really has. And like I said, at the start, it was YouTube that was definitely the channel. Yeah. Um, and over the years, it's changed from Facebook to Instagram and TikTok and Twitter as well. Twitter, not so much anymore, X. Um, but it's 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 constantly changing. And that's kind of where it, I never expected it to become a profession. Um, I just didn't know how my artwork would be not just received by people, but um, how would I make money from it? I guess it's always the worry whenever you're yeah. a creative person. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things always. that I think like, um, everyone, uh, like anyone here within a creative economy, yeah. creative, being a creative person, yeah. um, always kind of like from friends, family, it's just like, why don't you get a more secure job, yes, you know, yeah. all of this. And it's something that you can never quite guarantee, but it's the fact of doing it, mm -hmm. you will eventually get the opportunity to become what you want to do. Yeah, and definitely. They, yeah. Yeah, it, and there was definitely that worry from my parents and stuff, especially in school. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, it's it, they they acknowledged that I had a talent for it. They they knew that um I had the determination, but they were just worried. They were like, All right, still do your academic subjects, still try your best, mm -hmm. just in case you need something to fall back on, thankfully. Yeah. Um I haven't needed to and uh, that is down to social media, a hundred percent social media. Yeah. 100%. And I guess just paying attention to things that happen in the world and I try to stay current with my work and draw influence from things as they happen yeah um, how more... do you how do you find the influence is it like through news is it just through it's... social media or yeah. is it like how how do you get the idea for the art in which you do more often than not it's social media yeah. um, I used to love picking up a newspaper but it just doesn't seem to happen anymore <laughs> um, it's, it's one of those things that it does tend to be, I try to watch the news. I, I get like the news updates on my phone um, from the BBC website or whatever that come through if there's a breaking news story. Yeah. But ultimately it's social media. Yeah. And where my work is quite often very pop culture, it's very fun. It's about sort of like the pop culture industry, the new movies coming out, new pop stars. Um, social media is the best place for that and i think the whole world yeah. um uses it for that i watched a really interesting video the other day actually about um a guy who literally owns a football team in america wow. and what he noticed was is that if you pay all of the news agencies in america to sponsor the event mm -hmm. and to talk about it it is still less of an audience game than if you get mr beast from youtube to do it well yeah and this is yeah. this wow. is the the idea that social media and the individuals yeah. are now having control over everything. Oh, that's 100%. Going on and in like the world. He, he, Ryan Reynolds and Wrexham is a great example, yeah. right? I mean, what what he has brought to that town just yeah. because he's already no. a superstar. Yeah. It's more than any. Ryan, Ryan Reynolds in particular is actually an interesting subject because it's not just Wrexham. Yeah. Um, what he does as a businessman, he's an incredible businessman. Yeah. And what he does as a businessman is he goes around. Um, and looks for companies that are maybe failing, maybe not doing so well. Yeah. And he's just like, 
I will buy a sharing company and my media company yeah. will do videos. But the way in which he uses his media company in order to create the advertising for yeah. it is that he literally looks to the most trending, most viral, most thing, and he gets the person in that video to be in the ad. Yeah. Or, you know, for Valentine's, he does a drink, um, a cocktail mix for aviation gin, which is called right. the vasectomy. Yeah. Um, no, Father's Day it was, no, yeah, not yeah, Valentine's yeah. Day. Um, <laughs> but it's like a lot of those really kind of like interesting concepts which you can grab off of that. But Ryan Reynolds in particular is a genius when it comes to being a businessman. Yeah, as no, well. I agree. I, and I, I toasted that. I actually made this portrait with Toaster Marmite mm. um, as, a, as, a, as a cool Of course bank, you've done Ryan Reynolds' course. portrait. Have you actually met him then? <laughs> no, he's one of the ones I've not managed to get to yet. But mm. hopefully with all these Welsh connections yeah. at some you point. Should, you should try and get because you might actually be able to get I don't know if they're doing another series of uh, Wrexham, but yeah. try mm. and get under that. Yeah, well, I, I recently filmed a TV show uh, for Channel 4, um, Hold the Front Page, Um with those incredible um, comedians, Josh and uh, Rashid. And they actually encouraged me to do that portrait for the show. Yeah. And the idea is that they go around interviewing people to get a really cool story to make the front page of a newspaper. Yeah. And yeah, so that was pretty cool that we did the Toast of Marmite for that. So hopefully one day mm. I'll get to Mr. Ryan Reynolds. I was, yeah, I was going to say, on, on that topic, is there anyone you haven't met yet that you'd really, you're like dying it's on, on your wish list before you die. To, yeah, to maybe do. like people that I really loved growing up. Like I was a massive Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan. Okay. Like obsessive. So yeah. if I ever met Sarah Michelle Gellar, I'd probably just die on the spot. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but other than that, like, I, I you know, I've, I've got to some pretty amazing ones that I've admired all my life. Yeah, so, sure. I yeah. think if I met Patrick Stewart, I'd probably die. Yeah, you probably Yeah, mm. I probably would actually die. Yeah. I've met Ian McKellen. But yeah, yeah, Patrick Stewart. Like, I mean, they're the dynamic duo, aren't they? Really? Yeah, yeah. There's Laura Nardi, freaking Patrick Stewart, and Ian McKellen. <laughs> yeah, you too. Yeah, you yeah. too, and you too. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, we're actually missing Wayne, aren't we? Wayne's not here. Yeah, so, so no, Wayne's at home. But how is he doing? He's good. He's my partner in crime in a lot of the other aspect of my life, not just my artwork. So Wayne and I, we've got a radio show. We write for a local Cardiff magazine and a mm -hmm. bit of a double act, Wyburn and Wayne. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's, he's all good. That's yeah. kind of the, the fun stuff that I do when I'm not feeling as creative because mm -hmm. we all get creative block. Oh yeah, 100%. Um, and yeah. That, I get it all that, the time. And just celebrating the city, celebrating Cardiff. Yeah. yeah. So that that's essentially our goal is in what we do there. Yeah. yeah. So and, I, oh, I, and I think that um, you doing those things reinforces your other job as well. Definitely. It's like, you know, yeah. you being a Cardiff radio presenter yeah. really helps you in terms of everything else. Yeah, so yeah. And, and, it, and it opens like a, doors. Yeah. yeah. I, I can offer more to certain brands and companies with regards to what they get out of working sure. with me, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how do you deal with creative block then? Because I think everyone kind of has it. Yeah. On, like everyone does. I mean, I know, I think near the end of the year, I was just kind of like drained and everything like that. And it was just like, how, how am I going to deal with this mm. thing? And it just takes a while to get over it. But how do you particularly like deal with it? Um, I tend to just go and have fun with my friends and yeah whether that's a night out or just going to the cinema or whatever it might be but it's usually a night out usually a night out yeah you know me too well <laughs> um but like you know you've just got to have that release i think yeah. um you do i i'm not one for sitting around doing nothing yeah. i don't really enjoy that much i find it hard sometimes to sit through a whole film yeah. because i my mind is constantly going and mm. i think yeah more than anything is it's took me a while to accept that You've just got to ride it out yeah. and know that the world's not going to end in this time yeah. that I'm not feeling creative and yeah. it will come back and I will create another piece that is hopefully just as good, if not better than my last. Um, I, I think a lot of photographers tough. feel this way. Yeah. Um, videographers feel this way. It's like, how many times can you photograph a white background portrait? over and over and over again and then how many times can you make that creative how many times you know like mm. i remember last summer i did like eight photo shoots in a week and i'm like Phew. yeah like i need to slow down a little bit here and i think i think whereas you say you can't sit around and do nothing i can easily sit around and do nothing all day <laughs> no problem because that for me is kind of like separating myself from the issue and then yeah, I come yeah. back into it it's almost like i have to jump out and jump back in yeah, yeah i anything. think i think everyone has like different ways of actually dealing with it um, yeah and it's quite interesting hearing it to be fair i mean yeah. most people are probably i get drunk but um <laughs> you know some people might be oh, i i look at a sunset and sunrise in the morning yeah, you know, yeah. You know, i do book. love going Just to choose your shit like that i love going to the the seaside. I love the ocean. Yeah. I will watch waves for hours. Mm -hmm. It makes 
all my little problems seem so small yeah. um, compared to how big the world is. That is definitely something that helps. Mm. I do like to walk. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not just a drunk. On, I on do this, go for a walk. <laughs> yeah. On this topic, mental health is such a huge, yes. huge talking point in terms of um, photography, videography, art, you name it, anything, um, even just watching TV. Yeah. Um, and I think for us at Camera Center, like especially if we look at the COVID period yeah. mm -hmm. and we look at what happened during that time, and a lot of people sat at home, left with their own thoughts, people were furloughed. Yeah, people would struck off their jobs. It was a really shit time, mm -hmm. um, you know, and also a good time in a lot of ways as well. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, for us to be able to talk about these things, because we're all men here, mm -hmm. okay? And, you know, there's this big emphasis on the, at the moment of men talking about their mental health. Yeah, that's it being a be. very, very big thing. Um, but a lot of our customers, particularly our hobbyists, um, or amateurs or people getting into the industry um, that really want to, you know, have that expression of freedom. Yeah. And that expression of release. Is that something similar you get from your work? Definitely. Um, and you, like you mentioned, COVID there. And I think people turn to um, creativity and the arts way more than they ever have. Mm. And I think they had a new appreciation for it. Yeah. And yeah, so many people probably picked up a camera for the first time, probably yeah. picked up a paintbrush for the first time in so many years, more so because they haven't had time. No. Life has been too busy. Life has been too crazy. And all of a sudden they've, they've, they found with all this free time and maybe they didn't consciously know that it was going to help them through it, but it did. Mm. Yeah. And mental health as much as is, obviously it's a topic as much as our physical health during that time and i found that my artwork was being appreciated so much more yeah not just because people were stuck at home watching it and yeah. what, you know my views went up and all that kind <laughs> yeah. of thing but people help. just realized that yeah. that art was so important yeah that's yeah. it and there's things that you can learn and new skills and that kind of thing mm -hmm. which are always you know photography something you can pick up at any age as well yeah. i think um, it was interesting to see uh this this company over that time of course i wasn't doing this over that time i was uh on furlough at the time and it yeah. was quite a hard period um, yeah. in general but um, this company, I think, was interesting around that time purely because uh, camera sales did really well. They, yeah. they um, were way better for that, those two years yeah. than yeah. the company's been open yeah. since 1977. And I, think, and I think one of those things is, is in hard times we find we need a uh, reason to express ourselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. why, you know, I mean, people work nine to fives and, you know, we're lucky because our nine to fives are like creative, yeah. I guess, in yeah. retrospect. Yeah. Um, other people may find satisfaction out of you know mm -hmm. being an accountant. Yeah. Shout out to accountants. This yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we need them. Yes, okay, we do. they're, they're very it. useful. Don't yeah, just they're, the accountants. They're very, they're, you're really all lovely. Um, <laughs> but you know, what I mean by that is, I think people want to. Stu, sorry, can I can I stop you? I just heard a camera go off. How was there no space left in that car? Yeah. You did format this one, didn't you? Yeah. Did I not? Oh, sorry, I must have done another one. Okay. Just delete a few things. We've got another 10 minutes. <laughs> um, has it helped your own mental health? Definitely. Um, I think, I mean, to the point where I've, I've quite literally made a self-portrait using the packaging of my medication. Like, right. Because I, I'm, I'm open about it. I take a sertraline every day. Yeah. I found it so helpful. In fact, I didn't realize this until the pandemic when yeah. I was going for long walks every day yeah. with my best mate. Yeah. And I realized, you know what, I actually need a bit of help with this yes. because my lows would be so low that it didn't feel like the average person's low so yeah. i knew that i needed help with it yeah. um and now i find that my moods are so much more balanced and it allows me to to feel more creative and mm. get on with what i gotta do and yeah. it's great well you seem a lot happier yeah not honestly. that you were miserable before yeah, yeah, yeah. but i'm just saying you know yeah, yeah. You're, you're definitely more full of life which is yeah like, I, I feel good and yeah. yeah it's it's all good in the hood okay um health so is good. what we were saying Stuart, was about uh nathan and his own mental health and that kind of thing mm. um and how it's really helped him, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So, um, and I've also used, used like, you know, my profile and everything that I built over the years to advocate talking about it yeah. as men, as we uh, are now. Yeah, I think that's um, something that is, is missed quite a bit. Is, yeah. uh, mental health with men in particular. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'm not discounting, you know, the fair sex for no, of course. not having mental health no. issues. 
Um, it's just something I feel like is, is ignored because we're supposed to be strong yeah. and yeah. all that. Yeah. But the issue is the talking, isn't yeah. it? We don't talk. That's the problem. Because we're yeah. men. Yeah. yeah. That's why. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm half really my issues I've ever had have been really because I haven't talked about my issues. So. Yeah. yeah. And, and you've and got it a lot up. of issues. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> got a whole book full of them. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Jeez. We're not that mean yeah. to each other. No. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so... Nathan, you've had a lot of success. I mean, especially someone of our age group mm -hmm. as well. And you've done done really, really, really well. Um, what we normally do, how, how many minutes have we got left, Stuart? I'm just wondering. Oh, we're at 20, it's fine. We're at 20. Okay, so we're just over halfway. Um, and you've had a lot of success at, you, at your age and that kind of thing. Um, has, has your age ever been an issue for you? Um, I, I, I actually, limit? yeah. I mean, do you know what? More so... I think it's been an issue with other people, mm, yeah. um, particularly other artists and other creatives. I can remember I had my first big exhibition and it was actually just in a shopping center, but it was it was in the Capital Shopping Center here in the in the UK, in Cardiff. Yeah. And it was a huge gallery yeah. and I filled it with my work. And I can remember there was um, an older gentleman who was an artist that came by and actually said something like, you're far too young to have an exhibition like this. <laughs> okay. And I was like, well, what's my age got to do with anything, right? Yeah. So I think it's only, and I find that a lot on social media with all the trolling and the comments quite often, it's a case of you don't deserve to be doing this mm. because you're still so young type thing. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm nearly 35 now. Um, one, you know, that's plenty of time to have got to where I am. I thought you were 21. Uh, well, you know, well. it's just lighting. <laughs> um, but honestly, it's, it's the age has always been other people's issues, not mine. Yeah. Um, I so I'm just too. doing what I do. And yeah, yeah that's just got it, me to where I am. It's a relevant topic, isn't it, of when do you start? Yeah, and you know when, I mean? when can somebody say i mean even, even in uni my i had a bit of an issue with my one of my tutors in the first week actually told me to stop signing my work because i'm not an artist yet <laughs> and i'm like well what? when do i become an artist yeah i'm like to start with i'd already been selling my work via youtube and social media yeah for like a year or so before that so clearly i was already technically a professional yeah. artist. i guess that was university right yes university that was not yeah very... i mean i i I looked at one course. I won't name the university for a particular, you know, yeah. legal reasons. Um, <laughs> but I found actually I had more experience than a lecturer. Well, and that's not a shocking thing. <laughs> yeah. um, and good for you. <laughs> Especially but, with some, like, when it comes to the creative field, it's all very subjective, really, of course isn't it? Is. it? Yeah, of course so it is. I, and I think universities have always, especially, you know, there are some good, really good universities course, yeah. for creativity. Yeah. But I think it's, it's a subject that's quite hard to teach. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. I did go to university, but. Um, most of the stuff that I ended up learning, in some respect, like in some respect, I I taught myself. Yeah. Um, but when it came to you actually being at university, it helped me understand what it is to be an adult. Because I came, yeah. I come from like Somerset, right? It's so right, it's like yeah. this tiny little place in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, We're both from there. Yeah, both from there. Moynet. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm from Moynet. Yeah. Moynet. What are we talking about? <laughs> I just kind of, University. I, universities. Yeah. So, yeah. Universities. Um, yeah, so with with art, it's so subjective as to kind of like if you if you actually have the know-how to teach it mm -hmm. or, you know, yeah. um, and, and, and stuff like that. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's something I feel like most people learn themselves. Yeah, and also sympathy to the tutors as well because I think it must be hard to, to grade and to yeah. mark that yeah. and to tick those boxes that they have to tick. Yeah. But you can't put everybody in that box. No. You really can't. And so, like you say, it's so subjective. It's, yeah. It must be a difficult thing I, on both I, sides. I watched, again, I, I'm going on another person's video here, but I watched a video yesterday, actually, and it was a guy basically saying that you have a system mm -hmm. and you have a structure and creative people tend to sit outside of that structure. And when you put creative people into a structure, they lose their creativity. Yeah. Because there's, in creativity, there is no structure. There is no, no compound idea I think of, of what happens. I, within, like, large corporate entities, there's actually a, um, a test they put you through. And I think this is actually done in John Lewis, even amongst their sales staff. It's, mm. it's weird. Uh, I think it's like a Myers-Briggs test. It's like a test which basically fits you into um, certain categories as of, as a worker so for example there would be somebody that creates conflict in order to get other people excited to get going right yeah. it's a really kind of like dark way to look at 
business practices. Yeah. But usually there's the outliner creative on the outside, or you know they they are some in some retrospects like the glue of the team, or yeah. you know get things going faster in other yeah. ways. Yeah, I see. It's yeah. so interesting. Isn't it's it? there's the so psychology much. behind it all. Yeah, and the science is like fascinating. Yeah. So Nathan, is there any any particular work or art piece that you've done where you're like, oh my god, this is intense. Like this is maybe the hardest one that you've done. Um, yeah, there's there's some that have been hard for dif- dif- different reasons. Um, sometimes the materials are really difficult to use, like drawing in snow because it's melting and <laughs> yeah. painting with cat food because it stinks. Mm-hmm. Um, but more so than anything, I find the difficulty comes from the message sometimes I'm trying to convey. As yeah. much as quite often my work can be really fun and pop culture and silly and lighthearted mm-hmm. and it makes people smile, sometimes I do try to pack a punch with a message yeah. because art can sometimes... Um, deliver that punch a lot easier than words and yeah. it sticks in people's minds you know yeah. um, so I've made several pieces standing up for things that I'm very passionate about whether that's LGBTQ rights um, whether that's helping the likes of Gareth Thomas with his HIV story um, there's a huge portrait of him in Cardiff Royal Infirmary which I created with fake blood fingerprints it is big which yeah it's pretty big. cool it's and obviously he helped unveil that with me I've done a lot of work with the NHS um, to try and help vibrant up their corridors Mm -hmm. um, because we all know the benefits of arts and health and well-being Um, so if if it has a punch behind it and a bit more of a message I feel more of a um, need to deliver it well I guess it's like a connection that you have with it which is only going to then emphasise the fact that you can talk about that with other people yeah and I try to really research things as much as I can I, I, I first to say I've probably not always got it right mm-hmm. but um and, and you know and things change with with age as well mm-hmm. um but I did a I did a sculpture actually of the um to do with the Abavan disaster and that was for a sky tv show I saw that. and yeah. it's probably the piece I'm most proud of I researched it so much and spoke to so many family members of people that um, were part of the tragedy mm. and the sculpture it meant so much to me and it's now on permanent display yeah. um, in the Rhonda Heritage Park which is amazing so to have my work in these different places with a message and a punch behind them it yeah. means so much to me as a Welsh boy as well yeah um, we will be showing Nathan's work on screen as we're talking as well um, so you guys can see all of that um, lovely yeah so 100% you'll be able to see the actual stuff because it's really cool thank you I really like it my first experience with you Nathan uh-oh. believe it or not uh oh was <laughs> well, it's Britain's Got Talent. Yes. Yeah. I remember seeing you on that before I met you. Yeah, right. And I was just like watching you and then I never thought in a million years I'd ever actually be friends with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here we are. Yeah. You know? It's kind of so, crazy. I mean, that's, oh gosh, 2011. So that's mm-hmm. a long time ago now. Yeah. Um, 13 years. Um, but that was an amazing platform. I can't really remember much of it, to be honest. It yeah. was, I was so young and shy and timid at the time. And it, it I just wanted people to see my work, I guess. Yeah. And it seemed like such a cool thing I, to do. I imagine it it's one of those scenarios you throw yourself into it. You don't really know what's Not going to happen. Not a clue. Mm. And it, it just, it literally went from overnight people stopping you in the street, being like, oh my God, you have a toast boy. Yeah. And like, it, it was so constant. <laughs> yeah. And it was an amazing experience. So much so that I actually did it again two years later in Austria on their version of the show. Yeah. And with age and confidence i remember so much more of that and i felt so much better doing that yeah but yeah it's just another avenue to get your mm. work because I, I remember watching i remember there was a moment it went wrong yeah in britain's got time yeah, yeah, yeah. It, didn't, it didn't like yeah do exactly what exactly no, this, it, this, you know. this, so it's just an example of like picking yeah. yourself back up yeah you it's know? live tv and mm. yeah the semi-final uh, I, was, I was playing with fire quite literally mm. and the fire went out on live tv yeah. in front of i think it was something like a 15 million viewership yeah. and all those people saw me kind of crumble on yeah. live tv and again how mentally i picked myself up from that was was a bit of a struggle it was yeah. hard um but here we are 13 years later i'm still yeah. working professionally still as an artist yeah, 100%. and yeah it's great yeah Anything more to add, Stu? Uh, no, I think we're at 38 minutes at okay, the moment. So, so I think we'll do a, yeah. we'll do a close down. So the, the final question, the mm-hmm. next question I ask everybody that comes on the podcast okay. is what advice would you give to baby Nathan okay. or to a, another baby Nathan wow. um, on 
life and creativity is there anything that you'd like to put out in the world yeah what's your message more than Fire anything away. it's uh stick to your guns trust your gut mm -hmm. don't ever let people try to dull that sparkle i guess yeah. and tell her like a bit of sparkle it does love a sparkle yeah and um, it, it really is just if it feels right and you know you're doing the right thing in mm -hmm. your heart just do it create um let other people decide whether it's good or bad mm -hmm. you create and the more you create the more the world will appreciate it there we go yeah how good was that that felt good yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, shall we close it down darling yeah yeah you start i start yeah you can what start this one please like follow and subscribe if you want to see more i'm clearly the best and i'm gonna edit tyra out at this point so <laughs> Have a good day. Thanks, Thank you, Nathan, there. for coming uh, you, down bro. today. Thank you, Tyler. Don't worry about it. And, uh, right there. Sorted. Have a good day. I'm just here. <laughs>